and welcome. That's not funny. Oh, and the world's going crazy. Stop, drop, and die. We've got no time for bullshit. Stop, drop, and die. With Ava, RJ, and B-Rock. It's stop. Stop, drop, and talk. That's nothing to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah! Welcome, welcome, everybody, once and for all to Stop from a Talk. Thank you all for joining us. My name is RJ Hale. Thanks for tuning in this week. And with me, as always, is the incredible, the talented, the beautiful, the gorgeous, the extremely sexy E. B. Rock. No, 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 Eva Steele. He's very sexy. And. <laughs> You knew it was oh. gonna happen. Yeah, you know you. Well, I knew that. at one point this was <laughs> gonna happen, where you were gonna like do that because it always goes to you, then to me, then to B Rock, <laughs> and I was like, one of these times, he's gonna do that. Ah, I was right. right. Didn't I was right. Well, hello, B Rock. Hello, Eva Steele. Hello, hello, hello guys. Hi, stop dropping talkers out there. How are you excited? How are you guys excited about the show tonight? Every single show, I'm so excited. Oh, God, so excited. Having I'm really such ex- a good guest like Shannon Larkin, too. Oh, oh my, my God. Gosh. Yes, Ooh. we have Shannon Larkin, the drummer from Godsmack, and one of, my, one of my favorite drummers of all time. I remember being a kid watching, I think, the, the video for Straight Out of Line off their Faceless, al- or, yeah, Faceless? Faceless album. Came out in, like, 2003, something like that, around, the, around that time. And uh, don't quote me on that. I don't know what year exactly. But I remember watching the video, seeing him play, and I'm just like, oh, I, I got to up my game. Like, this guy's incredible. He looks like a spider back there. He's crazy. And there's where RJ stole all of his moves from. Yes, there it is. Now everybody knows. <laughs> Secrets out. He might have stolen from Shannon might have some of his, uh Might have stole some of his fashion, too. I don't know. We might talk oh, about that later. We might have to dig into that later. I don't know. that The last tour, you know, here's some interesting, uh, here's an interesting fact. The last tour that Hailstorm did before the pandemic in the States uh, was with Godsmack and Monster Truck. So not only did I get to watch him every night, but I actually got to get up on stage and play with him every night. And that was absolutely just, you know, a dream come true. That's awesome. And see, I mean, you've toured with him, obviously. You've got to play next to him. And yeah. Eva's, Eva's worked with him. I have. Dan has produced DVDs with Godsmack. So it's always great to have, you know, a member of Godsmack on the show. We always look I, forward to that. I know. I know. Uh, so one of these days, we'll finally have all the members of Godsmack, hopefully. I have actually not worked with him. Really? Oh, my bad. I what? Oh, you had. what? Wait, wait, what is the... <laughs> What's my, uh, I, assume, I assumed, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was it there. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Um, It's funny because I have worked with um several of our guests, but Shannon is not one of them and neither is Sully. I've never worked with Godsman. Wow. Well, you're about, well, you met Sully. He was amazing in season one, episode was, three, right? Uh, everybody go back and watch that one. Uh, And you're going to love Shannon. He's such a sweetheart. He's great. In Maybe fact, is he, is he here one. right now? Is he at the door? Is is he at the door? Well, he might be at the door, so it might be time to uh, hold on just one second before we bring Shannon in. Uh, I just think that, you know, we're all still kind of in a pandemic and, you know, that things are still kind of crazy. So I think that we all deserve an, a little bit more medicinal laughter. Ooh-wee. Medicinal laughter. We're bringing it back. <laughs> medicinal laughter. <laughs> we all need to laugh. So... Have you guys heard uh, the latest poll numbers out there? Turns out that uh, six out of seven dwarves are not happy. Oh, good lord. Thank you. Thank you, Snow White. Thank you, Snow White. Dad joke. All right, it's time for Shannon Larkin to... And... There he is! (laughs) It's Shannon! Woo! What's up, bud? Yeah! What's Hello. up, Shannon? What's All happening? Right. Here. Oh man, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for thanks for uh, being a guest on our show. This is so cool. Yeah, man, I was excited, RJ, to talk to you again. I know it's been a long time. Like I was explaining earlier, I think the last U.S. tour that we did was with you guys in 2019 with Monster Truck. Yeah, and that was fantastic. That was so fun, man. It was it was so cool getting to jump up on stage with you and. and and play songs with you and throw sticks back and forth to you. That was just such a, my, my 13 year old RJ was, was doing cartwheels. So I was really stoked on that. Thank it was you. totally cool and totally surreal because you know, like, God, we saw you on your first tour. 
we played, right. we, toured, we toured together on your very first tour. And to see you develop as a human and as a drummer was amazing, dude. Thanks, you man. Know why? Because he stole all of his moves from you. Oh. <laughs> that's not, you know, that's, that's not. Okay, some but of them. It it's going to happen when you're Shannon Larkin, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, everybody, it's like you, you, you feel the songs and you move accordingly and you can tell when dudes are real and RJ's real. Oh, thanks, man. It's uh, you, you it, and I, I feel like we're kind of cut from the same cloth. Like what we, what we, how we perform on stage is an extension of what we're feeling in the moment when the music is taking control, when the playing is taking control. We're not out there really trying to burn calories and try to uh, put the show in front of the playing. The playing has to come first, and the show is just a byproduct of uh, just playing for so many years and and uh, and just wanting to have fun on stage wanting to, to feel the music right and like we're entertainers and performers you know as well as drummers and musicians you know right I've right yeah. me like that i always looked at it man when i was first starting god and you know whatever 1973 you know i'm like seven years old or whatever and you know at the time all the drummers like my one of my favorite well two of my three of my favorites were uh phil rudd acdc like one of the first bands i was you know jam too and started learning too and you know he basically just sat there and the great neil pert who was one of my first concerts ever yes. and you know yeah he's like that picture look at my face i, I know like, so happy <laughs> i'm standing next to a mythical creature like it was like yeah it was like a unicorn had its paw on me or something it was insane right yeah i couldn't even talk but uh anyway I know I'm stoned. I forgot where I was. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I think it. I think well, it's really for funny you. too because uh, you know obviously you and RJ both have these unique styles, but I've never heard of two rock drummers be compared to uh, what is it? The Sesame Street drummer? Oh, is the that who it is? Animal. Yeah, the Muppet drummer. Oh, there you go. That's animal. That's right, animal. It's all, all the time. You two. <laughs> get to get do pal, you know. Right. <laughs> But uh, but anyway, yeah. So anyway, Phil Rudd, Neil Peart, you know, a lot of the drummers. You know, there was there was Keith Moons and John Bonhams. You know what I mean? But mo most of the drummers just sat there. And as a young kid, I I wanted to be like Angus Young, man. I wanted people to look at me. You know what I mean? As a little yeah. playing clubs, at thirteen years old or whatever. I was like, I'm Angus on the drums. That was that. And yeah. that's why. And I didn't want to. You know. And there was the old saying that drummers should be heard, not seen. And I was like, fuck that. Yeah, well, I can say the F word. I don't even know. Oh, like, yes, of course. It's encouraged. Yes. That's we love the F word. word. You know, can we just point out real quick that that the F word. Yes, for the F word. Can we just point out real quick that that band on the Muppets was like an exact representation of every of every musician stereotype. You know, you had the crazy drummer who's out of his mind. You had the bass player who's like really, really chill. Then you had the saxophone player that's like, hey, man, you know. And, uh, you know, it's it's very, the stereotypes were, were perfectly lined, don't you think? That's because <laughs> I'm convinced that the people, that, the people that wrote Sesame Street, they were stoned. The Muppet Show, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, sorry, Muppets. Not what the Sesame. hell were they smoking? Hopefully, whatever. <laughs> well, we're they might have been. The Sesame Street creators might have been stoned, too. But, yeah, no, the Muppets were, Jim Henson's Muppets, his writers were definitely on something. Right? Yeah. <laughs> now, he's the one drummer I haven't met was Animal. <laughs> Man, Alice Cooper on there, I remember seeing, you know, and I was a big fan of Neil Smith, the, the, the original Alice Cooper band, you know. Yep. Neil Smith, huge influence. And just the way they arranged songs to me was so, it still is to this day, very, very uh, original, very odd arrangement. Yeah. And I think, like, they would be live in the room as I contemplate these things, and they would, like, write the song around Alice's uh, vocal. So say he only had two lines in the bridge. The first bridge is only twice, but the second one's three times, but then the last one's twice again, for whatever reason. It's like, uh, you know, so they were on the spot and it, you know, times have changed so much that, you know, the spontaneity in the studio is kind of gone now, you know, and yeah, everything yeah. like regiment, everything's done. But by the time I get to the studio, man, I can play it with my one hand tied behind my back, you know? Yeah. But, that by then crazy. it's it's beat in you know what i mean and you have all your like fills and every every symbol if i'm going to go to the bell here everything's all worked out where you know back in the 70s those those early rock bands and black sabbath included you know 
it was just free form in the studio. Like you could, you could tell they were doing shit right off the top of their head on, yeah. on the moment, in the moment, like we do live, you know? Yeah. When you were saying like, you know, that you wanted to be like Angus Young, you wanted to be in the spotlight. Um, yeah. You also have, you know, Soli is obviously a very good drummer and you guys do the drum battle together. So what is that like having someone else in the band that's such a professional, great drummer? Does it keep you on your toes to always keep that high amount of, uh, you know, showmanship? Or is he bossy as shit? (laughs) You know, what you got to know is, um, like, I'm old and so we're we're both the same age and we're, we're older. And so I met him in 1986. We argue whether it was 86 or 87, but he came to see my band Wrathchild, right? I had this band and I started this band. I got a drum set. I was eight years old. This guy, Terry Carter, got a guitar. He was 10. And when I was 19 and he was 21, we signed to Atlantic, whatever. We did our whole thing. You know, we went through all this. We grew up together, me and Terry Carter, but it ended up when it, you know, Got to, well, it could, I could go around. I just got Terry Carter in another band that I'm in, this this blues thing. So oh, so, wow. Yeah, like, and I started music with this. And now that I feel, you know, you know, I'm in Godsmack, you know, for 18 years now. And we, right now, we're just, you know, concentrating on uh, writing songs at our leisure. Like, we're not, we're not playing any shows. We have some makeup shows we have to do next year, I think. But, uh, we have this, this opportunity, you know, we're blessed to, you know, to be able to not have to, cause you know, the world's weird, yeah. weird right now. And I, know. And I don't want to be in it, man. And so I'm hermited, <laughs> straight up hermited up, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I don't really leave. I go out, you know, for necessities, groceries and shit and mask up and fucking, you know, same here, but, <laughs> but you know, um, I don't Thank leave. God for weed. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, the other thing is like, hey, man. Oh, he's got his. Got his <laughs> there. Hey, he's got a too. Yeah. Speaking of Muppets, we just got a picture of uh, Kermit with a joint. Um, <laughs> I love that. Well, I guess it is easy being Shannon, green. <laughs> you don't even have to go out to get groceries. Why don't you just do Instacart? Oh, because I, I, I have all these like, I drink these vitamin drinks, kind of like the probiotics, and. You know, they're, I like buy the whole box, but they're like three bucks a shot. And yeah. the, mm-hmm. so like, I don't drink alcohol or anything. So I've just, I drink these, uh, like there'll be like pressed ginger, you know? Oh with, yeah. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah. No, I like, know exactly. What oh my about. God. They'll have like apple in it, but then there's these ones called the firecrackers and Arden's gardens, the brand, but there's all, here's the point. There's all these different brands and the shit's expensive. So I'll go there myself. And like, cause there's always ones that are on sale too for five bucks or whatever. And you can get, cause you know, I buy, like, I'll probably drink, you know, four of these five, maybe a day, you know, throughout the day wow. as I eat too, you know, I got to feed my 110 pound massive frame. Yeah, yeah, right. I eat I eat. 110 pounds. I could body slam you. Woo! And I'm yeah. five, four. <laughs> I'm wiry though. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm Irish. I'm wiry. Oh yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll kick your ass, you know. I'm German. <laughs> I'm I'm a brute. Yeah. yeah, right. Look at that. You know, I'm, I'm curious about that. Is is that something that's helped you play so well for so long? Is like really, really prioritizing your health and help and your joints and inflammation and all these things. Yeah, I think. Well, I not really. I I just I've looked like this since I was can remember. I've never. And you know, in fact, I'm you know I'm the dude. Like everybody's like, oh my god, give him a cheeseburger and everything for. <laughs> all my life, all my life, you know, that's, that's been the story. And, but I've always like, even when I was in like junior high, trying to try out for the football team and shit, I'm trying to gain weight. So I'm eating like, I'm doing all these, you know, program. And like recently, I think like three recently, it was like three or four years ago, we were out with Shinedown and, and I had done the uh, PX 90, the whole thing. And, but my thing was to gain weight, you know, trying yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Weight, whether it's muscle, whatever it is. And I gained, I mean, it's like a six week brutal program. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, like, you know, three baked potatoes a day or whatever. And it's, oh, what, shit. it's crazy, you know, and I gained a, almost five pounds after six weeks of this thing. I was ripped as fuck, but I, I'm still like, look like a ripped skeleton. <laughs> yeah, you definitely look pretty ripped. Well, I'm just talking about 
um, your your diet, your probiotics, your uh, like what what type of supplements are you like what 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 are you what doing keeps you to keep feeling good enough? What keeps you feeling good? What keeps you playing as if you're still that 15 year old kid? Well, you know, it's I just I eat the way I always have, which I love greens and salads and vegetables and all that. I eat that's every, important. By the way, yeah. I don't there's nothing like I don't like. Like I love all cultural food, ethnic foods. I love yeah. food. I love hot food, <laughs> Thai food, Indian food, Mexican food. That's me and my our bass player Robbie and Godsmack, you know, when we're on tour, there's days off and we always try and go and find some Thai food or some Indian. Because Sully's the opposite. He's always just the steakhouse or the, yeah. Italian, or the, Italian, or the Italian restaurant, you know. But uh, a hunk of meat. Yeah. And I, you know, I try and just eat healthy and normal, but I do drink those shots. And, you know, that was pandemic shit. Like once, like we lucked out so hard because we did this, this record that was, you know, a successful record or whatever and toured the world multiple times by, by the time we came home in December of uh or was in january of 2020 we had february and march off and we took two weeks off of the christmas area but we got home mid-december and then went right back out january and then got home february and we had march and part of april off and then the festival started and we had all these gigs like oh geez with metallica opening for metallica all this cool wow. shit. <laughs> and then you know but then as we all know, you know, then it just shit hit the fan. Boom. Yeah, the world yeah. shuts down and like all those festivals yeah. canceled. And then, uh, and we said, well, fuck it. Like we were kind of like done for four singles already at, you know, radio number one, four number one singles yeah. at radio, the best we've ever done. Like, yeah. So, so we had toured for now a year and a half. We were all burnt out anyway. And, you know, yeah, we were buying Rolls Royces and shit and fucking, <laughs> you know, or whatever. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do you jet, jet airplane? What do you, and, and uh, you know, yeah. I want some. I want a jet pack. That'd right? be fun. Yeah. What do you do, Shannon? You were talking. You were talking about. You know, you yeah, you kidding. drink I'm those. Uh, you drink those healthy drinks, and you you eat healthy, and you keep pretty fit. What do you do? Do you do anything for your mental health? Do you do any any meditation? <laughs> anything like that? I do. I do. Wow, that's pretty. Awesome. That's pretty awesome. What, what it helps you? Look at my room. Whoa! Oh, that's wow, pretty- that's killer. <laughs> I think that's that throughout badass, the pandemic, dude. like a lot of people have started focusing so much more on mental health. It's very and vibey Shannon in there. Has built his entire room around that. <laughs> yes. Is that your turtle over there too? <laughs> turtle. You see my turtles? There he is! <laughs> Holy cow! Look at that. Tell us about the turtle. What is this about? Well, this big one is Mama. That's Janice. 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 Jackson. Oh, cool. Because this guy up here on the rock. That's Johnny Winter. They're albinos. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty and good. Johnny, you know, so I got, I got Johnny Winter, and then Johnny Winter. I have this cool shot of Johnny Winter in which he's, you know, like got his arms around Janis Joplin. So I named the big one Janis. Janis Joplin obviously wasn't an albino, but yeah, so Johnny and Janis, right? Johnny and, and Janis. That's all. I've got. Johnny and Janis, everybody. That's amazing. Everybody you know, gets to see John. Say hi, Janis Joplin. <laughs> yeah was you know i've done a ton of research on her and she's you know a bigger than life personality she was and she's actually somebody that influenced me early on just personality wise like she's just like such a big presence she was such a big presence and you know like all the cool shit she did and all she was so ahead of her time you know standing up for like you know desegregation and all of that stuff that was going on yes while she yes. was huge I, was like, I love that about her she's one of my all-time favorite artists janice joplin is by I mean, far. my daughter uh i got you know my wife got to pick her first name and i got to pick her middle name and so i called her pearl oh that was her alter ego janice oh that's joplin. cool and her last that's album awesome. was called yes pearl. yes it was so that's how much I love Janice. So we got something in common there. Yeah. So speaking of yeah. speaking of turtles, do you just have the two, Janice and Johnny, or do you have more? Also, do they know karate and they love pizza? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I have a lot. I have a lot of turtles. Um, these, there's even in this one, I have. I'm like two, turning. Uh, to look. There's a red eared <laughs> slider, a little baby red eared slider in this uh, aquarium, and there's wow. also. But I also have a diamondback uh, Maryland terrapin, which oh. ter- 
terrapins, uh, the, the difference between a terrapin and an aquatic turtle is the terrapin can live in brackish water. But if you, if you raise it from a hatchling, wow. uh, there's a big, that's Johnny. There's Johnny. Oh, hey. It's Johnny. Johnny. That's Johnny. That's and Johnny has babies. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's so cool. So they're, they're like family. So who's, so what's this one? That's a Mississippi map turtle named Bertha. Oh, and that's and yours. Out. She's out in the big pond. Like that thing right there is eight inches big. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. So this oh, photo wow. is Look up your that. backyard right here. No, no, that's oh my god, that picture. <laughs> that's when I had. There's thirty three thousand more gallons added to this whole pond. Holy cow! Oh jeez. <laughs> my god. Shannon. So you're no joke that's into what, this. That's what happened, man. The pandemic happened, and basically I was like, I built. A turtle pond. I've rented a backhoe, dudes. From fucking, uh, <laughs> I've never driven a backhoe, you know. And um, but went to Home Depot, you know. They yep. they, they delivered it here. They were like five minute little instructor because I'm like, good yeah, luck, I'm don't die, backhoe, you know. And a uh, little five minute thing, and it was easy. And then you know, whatever. I dug this turtle pond. They did the whole thing. I'd order the kits online and all that shit. The pond line or everything. I hope so someone's I, got I, video of you driving that thing. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I did have to my, the two dudes. Anyway, long story short, that I had done that uh, before Legends dropped and before I had to go on tour for a year and a half. And yeah. I built the turtle pond, you know, and I didn't do the overflow right. There was some whatever. And so, but I'm flying, you know, we're writing the record. And so I'm back. I'm home a lot in and out, whatever. And so got the turtle turtle thing. And then, then we go on tour. When we got back again, when the pandemic struck and then all of a sudden, I had planned, we had planned the next six months to be, you know, out there. And uh, all of a sudden there it is done. Well, I'm like, what am I going to fucking do? You know I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, and cause it's not like, cause I do have this other band, the Apocalypse Blues Revival. Yeah, that I, that's I, right. I love. It's, it's my heart. And I love that too. I love that too. Shane, you know, hey, you'll love this RJ. It's like a Cinderella story, man. Um, the singer has been my drum tech for 24 years. No way. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's Shane, isn't it? That is Shane. There he is. Yeah. 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 Baby, wow. Shane, baby. Baby oh, Blue. My, I, yes. Oh, my oh, I've God. I've seen him amazing. for a while. Wow. I love. That's, that's awesome. right. I, I know he's a singer. Yeah. Yeah. And we hung out a lot on that tour. I, I love Shane. He's great. He's a sweet dude, man. And he's got a great voice. And he has a big range and almost perfect pitch, man. So and we're going to. But uh, anyway, everybody check that out. That's amazing. Yes, do yeah. check that out. Also, yeah, sure. you've been in in several bands. I've been there. in four bands that are. I mean, I've played with many, many, many bands. You yeah. Know. <laughs> but that <laughs> was that, that photo. Picture, that's right. That was my yeah. first one. This dude, <laughs> that dude on the far right, is Terry Carter, who. I started my instrument. And I was eight. He was ten. Whatever. We started the band. And then that's, you know, 12 years later or whatever. So is but, that you on the oh, wow. far left? Yeah, which one are you? Left? Far left, tattooed. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> I was like 19, you know, in that picture. <laughs> that's amazing, yeah, man. Awesome. Oh, so tell God. us about these bands you've been in, the four bands with some notoriety here. Let's that was, uh, well, it was Wrathchild, then Ugly Kid Joe. And I I did two records with Ugly Kid Joe and and we toured with like Van Halen and all this cool shit. You know, it was a great time in my life. Moved to Santa Barbara, California. I got married, had a kid and, you know, went through the ugly years. But, you know, alas, you know, uh, two records later, we found ourselves dealless and it wasn't the type of band that was going to, you know, where it was like, yeah, let's all just roll and do our own thing. And we were all okay, you know, high five. And we're still great friends to this day. And then, Good. you know, Later on, 17 years passed. I mean, I know I'm doing sidebars here, but it's a certain <laughs> <laughs> 17 years passes, you know, after we sat down in Santa Barbara, California and broke up as a band, Ugly Kid. Um, and then I went to the punk band Amen from Los Angeles, Casey Chaos. Yes, it's Amen. Crazy. Great band. And uh, right. it was, you know, and we had many, many cool things happen in that. And, um, as far as never, we didn't sell records, but you know, Casey Chaos is a true punk rocker, and like he lives music and breathes it, and he was insane. And but biggest hearted dude, 
cool. So, amen years. So that's Bradshaw, ugly, amen. And then two weeks after I quit, amen, I was, uh, I was enrolling in this beauty school, dude, for real. My mom was a beautician. That's oh, what I do. No. I was, really? Yeah, I really 17 years. Yeah. Well, my wife was pregnant, and I was like, you know, I'm in a punk band. We, I made like 40, 40 grand a year. We were on Virgin Rec. We, well, we were on Roadrunner for the first record, and then they dropped us, and we turned around and signed a Virgin. <laughs> which was a cool thing you know yeah. it was a sex pistols fucking thing we did you That's know right, yeah. casey chaos pulled it off you know and we didn't sell shit and like virgin's like <laughs> virgin's like you know but it was he was a true punk and like like for instance the first single like off that our second record was called we have come for your parents on virgin right and <laughs> uh and it had these boys in in priest uniforms with axes you know we have come for your parents amen anyway and so our first single was called, well, our only single uh, was called The Price of Reality. And it was this cool fucking song, man. And the drums were super cool, AJ, RJ. You'd love it. But, um, oh, yeah. But, and then Virgin sure. came, they heard the thing, you know, what's the single or whatever. And we played it. And all they asked was that in the chorus of the song, he says, abortion candy machine. And that, what is the price? <laughs> and so, Goes, what is the price? It's a abortion candy machine. What is the price of reality? That was his thing, right? And so, and nice. he, and they said, if you just take the word abortion out, we could probably put this on the radio and put it on MTV and all that shit. And for me, wow, you know, and he was like, fuck you, major label. Yeah, you know? the total punk rock. Yeah, yeah you're punk. You got to rebel against that. Yeah, I know, right? That's amazing. Wow. I we know. Have come for your parents. We, oh my God. As a result, though, you know, we <sighs> we ended up breaking up. Or actually, I, Sonny and I left the band. And, you know, so had he have just changed that word, you know what I mean? But the true punk thing and all that. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, but we wanted, you know, with the, we wanted to sell enough records to be able to make another record and tour and, and make a living, you know. But, um, we didn't. So anyway, Sonny Mayo and I left the band on the same day. Oh, yeah. and he played in Snot, right? Snot. Yeah, it was yeah. Snot, Snot came before Amen. That's you right. Know? Yeah. Wow. And uh, in fact, I I was I was playing Jamie, who's with Bad Religion, my dear friend Jamie Miller, one of the my favorite probably drummer out there. And oh, yeah. but uh, and uh, but I've always just loved him and loved his snare and loved his Snot his style, and he played in a band with me called MF Pipples and I sang and he was the drummer. Wow. <laughs> and Tumor and Sonny from Snot, the bass player and guitar player, uh, were the MF Pipples. And so when I joined Ugly Kid Joe and we had a roadrunner deal on the table and shit. And then I met with Crane and Bradshaw had, had finally, you know, we called it quits and I left the band. But um so then now I find myself, oh, I got a roadrunner deal. And Roadrunner didn't have they weren't a major yet. You know what I mean? Oh, they were yeah. But they were still a, a, a good label. And so, God, I remember the deal and everything, 85K they were offering or whatever. And so we had this deal on the table, me, Jamie Miller, Sonny Mayo, and John Feinstein, and as MF Pitbulls, motherfucking Pitbulls. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But that and then Pitbull in, came out and was like, "What the fuck?" No, I'm just kidding. no, that's, that's in, Mr. World literally Guy. in like, like '93. This is this is '93. Yeah, yeah, long before Pitbull. Yeah. Way before. <laughs> so, but um, you know, and then so then I met Crane and and the Ugly Kid Joe thing. He's like, "Dude, come out, join our band, dude, it's rad." And I was like, "Dude," and then all my friends in West Virginia was like, "You're not you're not gonna start saying dude and rad, are you?" And I'm like, "No, dude." <laughs> but anyway, uh, no, dude. But anyway, so, man, look at that yeah. MF Pitbulls. I want to hear this. I want to hear you singing. <laughs> uh, it's a bit screaming, you know. Oh, I, of course, I'm, not, you know, yeah. I'm no singer. It was, it was, ah, it's like you know. screeching, you know. Like, <laughs> but, you know, it was like punk rock or whatever. That's punk awesome, rock. man. I love that. That old punk. Love it. Punk. That, awesome. metal, that 93, you know, metal punk helmet meets, you know what I mean? That kind of, those push built like oh my god so anyway sony tumor jamie i said dudes i got you know an opportunity i'm no singer you know but i am a fucking drummer and yeah. 
I'm going to go to California and join this band, but I promise you guys, I'm going to hook you fucking up. And they're like, oh, whatever, you know. Yeah, right. And I didn't speak to Jamie for a while after that, but he did me a solid and joined the band Ratchet, who were now called Souls at Zero. When I left them, man, I, I grew up with these dudes, like 12. Yeah. And so it was tough. And I was like, but I have this dude, Jamie Miller, that says he will take my place. And so that's like, you know, uh, I, I'm trying to think of a good analogy. That's that that's <laughs> that's like you know uh, Led Zeppelin saying, "Well, we don't have John Bonham, but Keith Moon's going to fill in," you know, or whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean. So it's, right? I, I, I handed them the great Jamie Miller so that they would not hate me forever for leaving our family. It's oh, family. Sorry, you, yeah. you know it is, RJ. It's oh yeah. Family. You're with a fucking band for 12 years. It's like brothers and sisters, man. That's oh, a yeah. long time. That's You're like time. literally brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we <laughs> literally are. Might as well at this point, you know. Oh, but, uh, is this like a, the entertainment family tree doesn't branch kind of thing? Yeah. Oh, oh never heard that. <laughs> Good. I like so, but, so oh. fucking, I get to fuck Santa Barbara, like the kid Joe, man. We were fucking ripping it up and like loving that town the town of santa barbara is one of the most basic places love that place. oh so, it's amazing so like we came state street there was oh man every it was just it was on fire there was a there was a scene and and to the west Brocket and and like so anyway snot was uh they did a, their first very first show at ugly kid joe's mansion where we were we rented dean martin's mansion to do our uh menace to sobriety album out in santa Inez, california right and so, and they knew Mikey and Lynn from Snot. And at the time they had these, these another bass player and drummer and they never played one show, uh, but they made a three song demo and started passing around State Street and everybody's, oh, Snot's a new band, you know. And so we had them play our Halloween party out there and they have this song, My Ball's Your Chin, right? And uh, <laughs> it was like, it was a show stopper. I mean, it's like, it was a, it was a show <laughs> It ended up on their great <laughs> record. It's, it's an amazing thing, you know. But Lim, it was punk, and it was like RKL, like West Coast punk sound with, with uh, you know, obvious funk and metal. And they was they were something else. The the ideas of, of Lynn and Mikey, but their bass yeah. player, their their bass player and their drummer weren't like you know, they were you know I don't want to diss anybody or whatever, but they weren't great players and and had issues, oh, you know. Yeah. With drugs or whatever yeah, and, yeah. and you know, it. it was back this was back in 92 93 or whatever and so so i was like listen y'all because <laughs> as soon as i met <laughs> lynn and yeah. mikey both those dudes are stars and they both were so creative and so energetic and lynn had that thing you know like singers have sometimes when you just you just you walk in the he walks in the room and everybody's like wow that was that dude you know and lynn, <laughs> lynn had that you know what i mean yeah and, yeah Anyway, I called Tumor was first that the bass player from ended up. Uh, he played in Low Pro. He's still in Low Pro, I think. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we toured with them with Stained like years and years ago. He's huh. a dear friend. That bass player dude, the long hair dude. Yep. I've known him since I was fifteen. That's a, I, 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 it, wow. it makes sense. You're all kind of in this tight knit family and all kind of from that same era, so that makes sense. Yeah. But again, isn't yeah. it so wild how small the entertainment industry is? Everybody thinks it's so vast and so big, and it's like, nope, it's like that six degrees of separation. Yeah, everybody knows everybody yep. who knows everybody. It's, it's, it's a small world. And but the yeah, you know, you know. um, uh, yeah. we're gonna do a little uh segment here. Oh, is it time? It's time. It's for time B, for B ranks ah. with uh -oh. B rock. Oh boy, here we go! <laughs> a five and a four and a three, two, one. Come on, B rock, let's have some fun. Let's take it away, B rock. <laughs> What's up? All right, Shannon. So we have a we have a thing called B ranks on the show, and usually I rank, uh, you know, topics or different things, but. We came to notice that you've got a pretty exquisite taste in fashion, and you definitely are one up on it from the rest of the Godsmack guys. Uh, so we we picked about, I think we picked five photos of you and, and different amazing yeah. outfits, and we just like to kind of talk about that with you, if that's okay with you. Of course. All, All right. right. Well, let's get it started then. Let's do it. Let's pop up one of these photos here. Oh, so this one, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of seeing, and you can 
you can get an RJ for this because he says that artists never like looking at pictures of themselves. But oh, I, I, I hate. Oh, I, I hate the hair, the glasses, the leather. I think the look works. I'm getting a Nick Cage vibe. I'm no, liking yes, it very much. No. Very Nick Cage. <laughs> it's the, the sunglasses. It's almost kind of Matrixy with the leather jacket and the sunglasses. It's very, very uh, mysterious. <laughs> yeah, that 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 was a vintage leather shop thing where I've in a vintage mom and pop store for like sixty nine dollars. You know what I mean? Oh, that nice. Perfect. I number. always say if I find a woman's jacket <laughs> from like the sixties and it fits my little arms and doesn't. <laughs> So Nick. like RJ's jacket, pretty much a, a women's jacket yes. from the sixty. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, RJ this towers over me. He's so much <laughs> taller than I am. But uh, before we go any further, I have to I have to say that the jacket that I'm wearing right now was a gift from you, and thank you so much. That was oh. so nice of you. You guys got us gifts on tour, and it's like no band does that. That was so. Oh, I, I, I love touring with you guys. Bands don't do that anymore. We're I old. mean, not really. You know, not not my experience. <laughs> I always do. I do it personally too. I don't. You know, you, it's it's like it's like you're on, you're at war out there. Yeah. And yeah. whoever's got your yeah. back should be appreciated. And you know, we it, you know how it is, RJ. Like we saw each other and we'd see each other every day. And what's yeah. up, man? And fuck past the other and catering and you know and it's life and it's fast and fucking. And then we get home, and I might not talk to you for another two years or something. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> exactly. It's just a weird business like that. But yet, people say, you know, RJ. I'm like, yes, he's a friend because I consider you a friend, you know, because you know what I'm I saying? Mean, it's not it, like, it has been almost two years, I think. <laughs> I mean, like, like dudes yeah. out there, like I'm sure, like Roy Mayorga, for instance. A, yes. dear, a dear friend, listen to this, Eva. Is it Eva or Eva? Eva. 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 Like, like, yeah. Like Wally, yeah. So, like, you talk about this Kevin Bacon and this small world, man. Roy Mayorga. Separation. Roy Mayorga. Boy, Roy. Yes, was our sound man in Amen. What? <laughs> wow. I'm talking on tour. Wow. That's on amazing. Tour. So, like, Next time did, I see him, I got to ask him about that. And, like, we did this Canadian tour in January, February. We did it, the same thing. With them, <laughs> That's the worst tour, man. <laughs> you can't. Oh. That was Stone Sour. <laughs> if you do the shit tour of January, <laughs> February, I mean, man, I did. I was like, you know, we would our bus would slide off the road somewhere. You know what I mean? You got the battery, so you're okay and all. So you're like just waiting, you know, until you can go. Then whenever, like everybody's pulled over, it's just you can't travel, so you end up yeah. sleeping at night. So we jump, we'd be drunk too and amen yes those yeah. were the days, we our scotch yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah man but so i jump out the bus and you know there's probably three feet of snow literally you know yeah and on the side of the road and i'm like snow angel i turn around and fucking back boom and there was like a boulder and i slid oh! and knocked myself silly dude oh, that would hurt. oh my god that's oh that's, but that's crazy Roy Mayorga was with hurt. me that's man, what I said. I know I, yeah. I had such a fun honestly if it wasn't for Roy it wasn't for Corey and all the Stone Sour guys like that tour would have really sucked but because they are just such wonderful people it made it so fun and yes Roy and I had quite a lot of scotch because it was negative 20 degrees pretty much for the entire three weeks and you don't want to feel anything so what more do you do basically drink a lot of whiskey and scotch anyway uh yeah. throw up that photo one more time yeah, let's do uh, another let's yes see. yes uh, throw up that photo one more time i'm calling no no the, the, the last one throw up the last one dan the last one oh, the i'm Nicholas gonna call cage this one no no the oh. Nicholas cage one no, no don't spoil it now throw up the, the Nicholas. yes I'm, I'm calling it oh here we go i, th I think i think i think i deleted dan it by here. accident well, sorry I, I'm I'm gonna, gonna, in our whatever I'm gonna title that that outfit Sorry. "Gone in 60 Shannons." Dad just because popped it's, up. Uh, our, Dad just popped up in our broadcast. We're in trouble now. <laughs> Ooh, we, we should title these. Let's let's check out the next one here. Okay. Okay. See, like, so that, what's like number that four? One. Ooh, yeah. that, that's pretty cool. Ooh, Ooh. like the fed, fedora. You've got the scruff going. The awesome glasses. Yes. That yes. It looked like it was too too long ago. To, to it? describe it, you've you've got a, you've got like a nice vest on. You've got a fedora. You've got sunglasses. Meanwhile, your bandmates are wearing, you know, jeans and, and <laughs> regular shirts, and you've got this style. What was the inspiration uh, behind this style? That one, John Bonham. 
Oh yeah, there you go. Bit. There you okay. go. Nice. Very Bonham. Yeah, I like that. How about this, this one, one right here? That that one looks. That looks punk to me. Gothic. That's very punk. Is is it? Is this very outfit Sid vicious? Right? Is it kind of a kind to your punk back, background for this outfit? Yeah, that was during another animal, and we had like we like made this side project so we could be real eclectic, you know. So one oh, song yeah. sound. So anyway, we had this punk rock song on there that I could sing. Nice, and, awesome. Uh, and so yeah, and that's that's a old punk rock look, you know, with the tight uh, plaid <laughs> pants and, and a plaid jacket. Oh, oh, man, so like, a picture of the pants, Dan? <laughs> I'd stripped off the jacket by then, you know? But oh, yeah. Usually I, I was waiting for him to jacket. be like, I stripped off the pants by then. <laughs> <laughs> that one, <laughs> this one feels like Angus Young a little bit here. Okay, yeah, this, so. yeah, this look, you, you've got this kind of uh, uh, beret and uh, this this animal print scarf, and it's it like looks very, hat. oh, very, very rock star. Well, listen to this. My dad gave me, that's a tie. And like oh. it's from the it's a tie from the '60s, and okay. but of course you know I wore it loose and wore it on stage. It got all sweat fucked, but it gets uh, caught in the drumsticks. Sweat fucked. New but I, 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 I've toured with a tie. It's it's annoying. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. But I still have that. My dad gave me that. It's a vintage oh, cool. uh, leopard, leopard print, and it's fuzzy. It's fuzzy. Yeah, I, I feel awesome. like the, the playing in a tie is kind of a. Uh, punk rock move just like kind of giving the middle finger to the establishment like oh y'all corporate cats wear this in your offices well we're gonna cut off our sleeves and wear a tie and just be like yeah you know it's like that kind of anarchic <laughs> attitude right yeah. don't you think yes Good. well what do you have on well, right end. now shannon it kind of looks like you i can't tell what your shirt is right now it looks pretty maybe festive. it's actually it's david like it's david bowie Oh, okay. Oh, wow. There we go. Oh, it's so funny. I feel like we are. Not, oh, that's pretty. Whoa. Cool. It's like he's on your face. That's amazing. <laughs> I thought it was Michael Myers for a minute. Bowie was <laughs> my cat's name. Yeah, Bowie's cooler than Bowie. Me. That's right. Oh, no, I had a cat named Bowie. Oh, yeah. What? Yes. Nice. Kindred spirits, I tell you. Kindred he's my favorite spirit. singer. Oh, that's yeah. so cool! Right? So that's um, what I got for B ranks. Was the the, the oh no 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 um, we got we got, we got one, one more only photo we have of Tony without his glasses. Oh my god, Ooh, what was that? Maybe what was that? <laughs> yes, yeah, the only photo. Was, one see, of the only photos I've seen with Tony without his glasses. This one might be before. Uh, this one reminds me of Chad Gray a little bit, Shannon, from uh, Mudvayne and and Hell Yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious about the. Uh, this is like a, a cutoff jean or denim T-shirt and the black uh, cowboy hat, like kind of folded up on the sides and sunglasses. Oh. Like, what's what was kind of your inspiration behind this look? Well, I had just gone like two years with a full beard and like wow. long and long hair, and it's not comfortable to me for me. Yeah, the beard, and then because I have bad skin anyway so underneath the beard i'm like what the what's that you know and my skin couldn't breathe or whatever and i'm but i went for it if you go for a look man you gotta you gotta breathe it and so i went for it two years so at that point when we're, we're, we're i think we made the four record maybe or no the beard was the four so the next record after that whatever I remember the beard yeah uh at the, the one after the beard <laughs> Then so I just shaved the whole beard and shaved my head and went nice. and then started wearing that cowboy hat. Yeah, because you, you, you had a beard and it a little bit. Yeah, I like I, the beard. I don't then. I don't know where the influence from the hat came from. Honestly, I think I like the hat and and it was one of those ones you know you, you could throw it in your suitcase. It like bends and it had wire on the thing so you could bend it. I don't know. I liked nice. it. It looks I'm cool, like, man. It's well, very it rock and roll. Cool. You know? And I guess we up. got I guess we got one more, right? We have one oh. more. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. oh, we got Dan Catullo in that one. There we and go. Yeah. Number two, Tony doesn't have his Look glasses on. I know. Tony's not wearing his glasses. <laughs> Dan, yeah. what is this 30 years ago? You look so young. Yeah, that yeah. was. That yeah, was what like, happened? That, that was like 55 years ago. That was. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised that, they that was had 2000, color film. I'll say this. Was over 20, for sure. I think. <laughs> I think we, we so, uh, Shannon and I, so I, I threw a Grammy party with Godsmack and Playboy, which was God, the most outrageous thing ever. We had, uh, we had also Steel Panther at the time. They were called Metal School. They played. We rented the Avalon out. We had carnival rides out in the parking lot. And uh, and all of the prizes out there were like sex toys or pornos. And I mean, it was it was the As craziest thing. 
and we had this anti it was like a it was an anti like formal thing so if you showed up wearing a suit or a tuxedo we went we went head to have a clive's party so it was like the anti grammy grammy party so if you showed up wearing a suit we would turn you away I turned oh, Rob nice. Thomas away. Uh, it, it was funny. Made him go, made him go back ah, to the team. You but did? It, it was such a great night. We had Trent Reznor there. And I had the Jim Rose side circuits working that. And then and we had guys walking around the red carpet, like, you know, with things hanging off their private parts and, you know, throwing up in each other's mouths. It was, it was the most outrageous Grammy party ever. But that was, yeah, was, <laughs> that was probably 2004. It was right after we did the Changes DVD. Oh, yeah, that's it, right, it was, yeah. yeah. It was the elite. It was it, actually you know what that was. It was probably it was probably February of 20, 2005. eons ago though. We were uh, very we were much much younger. Well, can I, holy, can, holy. I can I tell about my outfit? So yeah, I had, yeah. yeah, I had that made for the party, Dan. For really? Your, yeah. Nice. Uh, my lucky thirteen. Oh wow. yeah. Wow. Right. Now I feel special. You actually had a, a, someone do your wardrobe. Yeah, so I was technically in a suit, but you let me in anyway. It has a vest, the matching. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, you can so do whatever cool. you want. It was your party. That was my that was my my Johnny Knoxville look back then with my spiky hair. <laughs> what's, on the, what, <laughs> what's on the front of it? Go to that that first picture, Dan. It looks like there's like what? mesh or what is that? A scarf, Shannon? Unfortunately, Getty the uh, Getty image covers the the front of the. Best. It's got like a design on the jacket. I mean, like the, the lower, the rocket, lower part, it, kind of, it kind of feels rocket. Look at Rombola's shirt. eyes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tony's eyes. Whoa. Oh He's man, Dan. Dan, oh, you look hot. You, you, Shannon, you, Shannon, you kind of have a rockabilly uh, look there. I yeah. think that's where you, you, you feel like you feel like you're like in stray cats there. And well, and like, Dan, you kind of have that like every stoner in the in a nineties teen movie kind of look going no, on. He there. Ah, he looks like the manager of every boy band in the early. Yeah, teen. Oh know, yeah, he's he's like the the stuffy antagonist in every he like. He looks teen like he movie. looks like uh, I don't know. He looks like Dane Cook to me a little bit here. Very very bit. Dane <laughs> Cook. That's um, it. That's the one. You nailed it. Someone right, looks I'm like going. a happy clapping. Bye, Dan. Toddler. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> You know, I, I gotta say, uh, just just being on tour with you though, Shannon, and like seeing you go to meet and greets and go to press and all that, you you always wore really really cool outfits. Do you actually have a stylist, or do you just have a sense of style? Has that always been kind of a passion of yours? Oh, I just always dance to my uh, you know, beat of my own drum, let's say, and I, <laughs> I and you know, I've I've been I've never done anything else. And like, so since I've been 13, started playing the clubs and, you know, and it just, I've never, so I've always just dressed yeah. like, I've always dressed, you should see pictures of me when I was 16, man, I, you know, some crazy shit. Oh, I had like sure, but he, the, blonde uh, hair, you know, the Cruella de Vil or whatever. Yeah. And that, that know, last he, picture was on uh, this, the tour that we just did with you guys. You had the chrome drum kit. With, and you were wearing all white, white bandana, white shirt, white pants, white shoes, and a white leather jacket for the first song. And I, I, I love that. It, it's cool. I feel like your outfits like always have some kind of theme to them, and, they're, and they always kind of uh, match either uh, the artwork of the album or the stage or your drum kit. Uh, I think the first tour we did with you guys uh, with Stained back in like 2012, uh, you were wearing like a, a red button down with a black tie and you and you swept that out for like a black button down with a red tie but you also your drum kit was was red and black kind of mismatched was, was that done uh, like on purpose uh, uh, like a color scheme wise yeah you know i'm one of those dudes that my underwear has to match my socks <laughs> <laughs> no yes yes i'm with I mean, you i'm kind of ocd like that too you know <laughs> i really am man yeah. you know and so I like to, uh, I, I'm comfortable in my own skin, so I like to be comfortable in my own clothes. Well, I, I feel the same way. I feel the most comfortable when I'm wearing outrageous outfits. As I, I just, it, it just feels like, uh, you know, I'm armoring up to, to go yes. into, the, into the fields. You know, you're, you're putting on your, your Armor. Uh, yeah, you're putting on your, your, your uniform to go out and, and kick some ass, right? And that's time, right? It's a time in a yeah. band you're sitting there man like if we didn't change i just walked in and you know it's that time when you start to change it's like the dudes putting on their football uniforms or whatever you're getting ready to go out there and and perform man you better get you in the mode you know 
Yeah. Look at that picture. Oh, there is fuck no nice. well, you're a rock star. You're an absolute rock star. And you look the part. Okay, so I got to ask you a question here, Shannon. Um, Sully did something really, really cool for you at one point. I mean, all the time, but oh, wait a minute. One specific uh, moment. Eva. Yes. I'm going to tell you about that car. Is it the oh, car? He already knows. <laughs> I was going to ask him about the yeah. car. Yeah. A 64 but, Impala, am I right? But we were talking about Sully and I and the drums, and I got off on one of my tangents and didn't get back to it and i'd like to i'll address that right now because you know you people think oh man you know he's bossy or this that or the other but what i meant by when when we met in 86 87 well you know he was a fan of mine in the band wrathchild and like the band wrathchild right so when we first met you know and he was like can, can you get my band to open for your band he had this band lex luthor right and I'm like, well, you know, whatever. It, they ended up playing with us a couple shows. He was in Carolinas at the time. So what my point is like, you know, Rathchild had gotten signed. He moved back to Boston. Like every time Rathchild came to Boston, Sully would always come, uh, you know, in the day at sound check and we'd hang out. He'd take me to go do my laundry, whatever shit. Like we, we've been like that for since literally 86, 87. And so but he, he in fact oh look at there oh, look at the, the bros he, uh, he 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 even as i was learning the first two records that sully on a play by the way on the drums on uh you know nothing for nothing but yeah. um and as i was learning those when when i joined the band i had to learn old material and I, and, and i got to some fills and i got to this one fill and i'm like wait a minute and i called him up and i'm like dude that fill and he's like silent darkness mother life and it was ah! like this band Rothschild that I had, you know, like, so, you know, I think I'd like to say that I was influential in his young drum career also, not like oh, Bonham gosh. or Burt, you understand, but, you know, some, certain grooves, the 16s on the China type or whatever, things like that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's so so cool. he, was, he was inspired by you playing drums on the old Godsmack records. And then you became the drummer of Godsmack playing his parts that he stole from you. No, is, no, is, that, no. is that kind of what uh, <laughs> like I'm saying? Like everybody, you know, he didn't steal. Like, <laughs> well, you know, there's there's difference between like, um, you know, ripping somebody off. He got ideas. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not saying you no, stole. No, no. He was inspired by. He was inspired by. No, no, no. Right. That's what I was going to say. There's yeah. like, you know, if you look at, at, say, Morgan Rose, play the drums or whatever, and people sometimes would say, that saw me when I was younger or whatever, they would say, well, Morgan, you know, you got always moves from you or whatever, but Morgan didn't. Morgan was influenced and inspired by me to do this fucking alien freak thing. That's completely different than what yeah. I do, but, but it's similar because it's not conventional, you know, just like right. you, Jay, you're not I, a convention. You're not a conventional drummer. You know, you're, you're an entertainer and a performer. You can tell you're up there, with a purpose, you know, you're not just up there the backbeat of the band or whatever. I, I can definitely speak to that touring with guys like you and Morgan and and Ray Lazier and Will Hunt and Roy Mayorga Ray, and John Freddie Young. Are you fucking kidding me, Ray! Oh God, oh, Ray! Incredible! God. You 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 watch these guys every night and you do kind of learn things. You, you're not necessarily ripping them off. You 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 eventually find your own style of playing, but you're. You're inspired by these other players, and they make you want to up your game because you're like, that guy looks like he's having the time of his life. I want to apply showmanship like that to my playing and find my own style, right? Yeah, dude. I saw Rush in at, on the Moving Pictures tour, and it was the first time I'd seen Rush. And he tossed the stick up to the fucking 20 feet in the arena yes. and caught it. And dude, I immediately put that into my repertoire. I'm sorry. Yep. So if you want to say I ripped that off, well, okay, I did then. But no, it's inspired it was, it, by. It is. Actually, what, what a, yeah. it's borrowing. Well, one of the early stick spinners that I completely, uh, same same kind of thing, uh, Carmine Apice, when he played with Vanilla Fudge on the Ed Sullivan yeah. show, and he's like spinning and choking the cymbal and spinning and doing all this crazy stuff. And I'm just like, Oh, where are my sticks? I got to learn how to do that. Hang on. And I would like try to practice really slow. And uh, yeah, that's how you start doing it. You're just like, I want to try that just to challenge yourself. Yes. But and then, that, and then ultimately it, it develops into your own thing, like Morgan's yeah. alien freak. Your and, own spin on you know, it. 
Yeah, so, you know. Get on. it? Get your own spin on it? <laughs> you got to tell us about this car. Yeah, what about that car? Oh, yes, back to the car. So the 6.4 Impala, I had, I had when I joined Ugly Kid Joe, they were like, all right, dude, so we'll get you an apartment out here, one-bedroom apartment. It was in the same complex that Whit lived in. He's like, I'm your neighbor. And so what else do you need to join this band? And I was like, well, I need a car. And they said, well, what kind of car do you want? And I said, a 6.4 Impala. <laughs> and uh, this was 91 or whatever. And so, um, and I loved uh, Easy e So I wanted, that's, yeah. basically that's it. I fell in love with 6.4 Impala, Easy e with my, my dude. And so, and they said, all right, and, and gave me $5,000 budget. And I went to LA and, you know, there was a bunch of them at the time. It, was, it still is a popular car. Amazing. And, uh, and I got a super sport and whatever. It looked like Cheech and Chong car. And up and <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, it's that. Small, you know, it, wasn't, it didn't have the nice paint or anything, but man, the engine. And I fell in love with the Impala. And I had that thing for, my God, 10 years. And uh, and then and then I got the Godsmack thing. I moved east. The shit. Yeah. After a man, Godsmack. I moved east. And uh, I was like, I... I I can't afford, so I, so I sold my Impala out there, and so oh. and I was all like, I can't afford, oh. I can't afford right, and I can't afford to have a uh, you know, a, a hobby a hobby car, you yeah. know what I mean? And I then, and so I would say that. So he's like, dude, you know, get get your fucking Impala and get it. You know, you're on Godsmack, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm trying to be cool. I just bought a Camaro, whatever, and so, you know. He gifted me that and wow. flew, flew in my best friend and uh, my daughter who he didn't have to fly her in, but he got her there and my, but flew in my best, my buddy yet, my best buddy. And so that was so sweet. And that, you know, cause him it's and I, man were, there. we are, we are a lot alike. And we, like I said, we were friends for, in fact, he, you know, he called me, uh, when they they were like they made their the first album for like I don't know twenty five hundred bucks or whatever and they so had a different cover but it was the same record but minus the song voodoo but the same oh. exact and so and they were so they sold twenty thousand of those out of their trunks at shows and uh, W A A F out of the band that's the story and so we Sully well. that's why yeah Sully played the drums on that record you know mm -hmm. uh, hmm. and then Tommy Stewart came in was in the band or whatever and um, but so, God, where was I fucking going with that? I'm so Talking stuck. about the car and the gift. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Line your band. Yeah, so, yeah. It was a gift. It was a gift to you, right? Yeah. So all so those, cool. years, all the years later, you know, uh, like that. You know, he's he's always he's a very giving person. Anyway, as yeah. you saw, Jay. You know, I mean, he really oh, yeah. is. It sounds like um, a really good trend. Dude, yeah. I, I had uh, every single one of you was so gracious to us touring with you guys. I hope it's publicly known that touring with Godsmack is like being on vacation with with like your best buddies. It's <laughs> it was really you guys made it so fun and so easy for us. So it, it doesn't surprise me that that uh, he would do that, you know? Yeah, it surprised me only because I had no idea and he'd set the whole thing up. He's good <laughs> like that. He's, 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 he's sneaky. Yeah, very <laughs> yeah, you know. sneaky, silly. Sneaky, yeah. silly. We know, we know about sneaky, silly. <laughs> okay, so before we end this here, which we're we're getting, uh, we're rounding the corner to closing it. We're gonna play a little game here with you. Are you up for a little uh, teensy fun game? Ooh, these are these are fun. Ooh. I'm up for some fun. All right. <laughs> oh my God! What is that? He's all proper. Is that my Tesla? Is that is that uh? <laughs> no, it's no, uh, it's Shannon Star. Is that Elon too. Musk? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. Sorry. So here's the deal. Like, if I turn my, like, that's my, like, if I get a text message, it goes. Oh, okay. Hey. But but oh, I can't. For the like, love of God. It's I know fine. How you gotta run. shit your pants every time that thing goes off. <laughs> like, it's, so, it's only my computer. It's only oh, my computer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mine does that with emails, and I cannot figure out how to shut it off. So I hate that. Exactly. Here, like, ding, I'm like, what? The I honestly fuck thought that was that? RJ at first. Everybody stop. I, I uh, no, I'm not texting. So, God, everybody stop texting RJ. RJ. Okay, so listen. our game here is would you rather and it's just like a bunch of fun stupid would you rather questions something oh. kind of fun for our listeners 
but but before we go into the game, we have to announce the segment of the playing the game. The game is. We are. <laughs> the segment is. The segment is. Go ahead, RJ. Stop, drop, shenanigans. Stop, drop, shenanigans. Oh. Stop, drop, shenanigans. You'll never get me gold. And we'll never good. remember to play the song. <laughs> we haven't we played it for a while, maybe. <laughs> Oh, that was the B-Rank song. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Shenanigans. <laughs> would you rather, this is for uh, Shannon and RJ and B-Rock, but we're going to let Shannon answer first. Of course. Would you rather always have wet socks or a small rock in your shoe? Ooh. Hmm. My God, I'd rather have the rock in my shoe. There's nothing worse than wet socks. Oh, I would man. agree. I don't know. Once you get the rock in that shoe, you got to untie your... Oh, got it. Well, you know, if, if you have... How big is the rock in your shoe, huh? How about that? <laughs> if it's painful... It's, small, it's a small rock. Small rock. Okay, yeah. You can kind of move your toes and kind of shake the rock kind of and kind of get it like out of the way. Get in the way tip of your shoe, right? Yeah, you're right. Like having wet socks is just, yeah, yeah. small okay. rock. Yeah. Well, we've got, we've got a few questions here, so this is going to be fun. Okay. No wet Would socks. you rather be asked the same question over and over again or never be spoken to again? <laughs> never be spoken to again. <laughs> yeah, never be spoken to again. That's a, that's a, that's a winner. with that. Yeah, right. <laughs> you want nobody to ever speak to you again? Well, I, I mean, it. I mean, if I was, you know, if, as long as I had, you know, like my music or whatever, like even on my phone, I could be on a desert island and, and be alone for the rest of my life. I believe I it. I but when that. people repeat the same question over and over and over, you're like, are you are you drunk right now? Like, what I what's going on? Did that to my husband today, and he almost did not live. <laughs> I was like, ask me again, motherfucker. Ask, ask me, me one again. More time. Ask me again. Okay. Next question. Would you rather be punished for a crime you didn't commit or have someone else take credit for your major accomplishments? Wow. Shit's deep. <laughs> um, how severe is the punishment? <laughs> it doesn't say. What if it's uh, life? Yeah. Well, what if it's what if it's forty hours of community service? I say you just let somebody take the credit for your accomplishments because you know you what you did. Yeah. All right, yeah. I backed that one. Yeah, there you go. That's I right. know what I've done. Yeah. That's right. Take Some care. people don't like getting gratitude for their accomplishments. In too. fact, it oh, happens yeah. all the time, doesn't all. it? Be rocking, Eva. Doesn't oh, it? God. RJ stealing <laughs> moves from Shannon. <laughs> okay. So I've got another question. This one's good. Every one. move, every single. This move. is a good one. <laughs> every single move. Everyone. Would you rather yeah. buy all used underwear or all used toothbrushes? Oh God! Oh. Oh. Underwear. Oh. Ah. Underwear. What For if you sure. get the herp, chlamydia, the clap, any of the above? It's not like we all haven't had that before, right? Am I, I don't know. I, I'm, a, I'm not afraid of. I'm not afraid of any kind of sex stuff, but I'm afraid of rotten teeth. Is it is it antiseptic toothpaste? Like I would it, so much rather buy a used toothbrush, dunk it in Listerine, and oh, then use it. Well, you didn't say that. You didn't well, say you can wash it. Oh, yeah. we can wash the underwear. Yeah. Oh, we can well, wash the underwear. But then I'll wash the underwear. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's null and void. Okay. <laughs> Nobody agrees. <laughs> it's I don't a pointless like it. question. Uh, I don't like it. It's a good okay. one. Ah. We've got we've got two more here. Two more. Okay. Would you rather be married to someone stunning who doesn't think you're attractive at all or be married to someone ugly who thinks you're gorgeous? <laughs> I, I don't want to be married. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> uh, Hate no, it when that so happens. neither. <laughs> Hate it. All right. Hate it. All right. That. Neither. We're going with neither. All right. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Would you rather? This is the last question. Oh my God. Would you rather have skin that changes color based on your emotions or tattoos appear all over your body depicting what you did yesterday? Oh, like, hmm. Hmm. I'd, like, I'd go for the tattoos all over my body for what I did yesterday because all I did <laughs> was play drums and, and, I actually swam in my koi fish pond. 
because I have to swim. I have like, these ponds are connected by this river that runs through my yard or whatever. So I have to swim it and take the leaves out of these tubes that get stuck in there and clog them up. Anyway, so I would be covered in koi fish and drums. Nice. Oh, is, is that all you did yesterday? Is that no, everything? Yeah, you show, show us your tattoos. Pooping, sleeping, eating, walking, oh. all of it. All the things? Yeah. Like, even the things? What if you watch <laughs> Pornhub? Would you have the Pornhub logo tattooed on your body? Uh, oh, I, I have that already. Um, is, that a, yeah. is that a bad <laughs> thing? <laughs> <laughs> Want to see? V-Rox is on his ass. It's on my lower back. <laughs> oh, Get sorry. Out of here. It's like Pervert. a really mean tramp stamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think, uh, think B-Rock should probably go with the chameleon skin one. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want everyone to know. He's at home by himself, so, you know. It's I like, think I know. would also choose uh, the chameleon skin. I don't need anybody knowing any of the shit I do at any point in any time. Okay, yeah, mood skin. It's like a mood ring. That's kind of cool. So, all right. I got tattoos. I have lots of tattoos, but uh, nope. I don't, I'm a private person. But only Shannon would have the really cool tattoos because he does really cool stuff. And that's right. Uh, that's right. You know? <laughs> okay. That was so, so much fun. Shannon, yes. you have been an absolute blast to have on this podcast. Thank, Thank you so you much for being here. It's been an so, honor. So much for coming on. Oh, it's been a blast. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much and for enduring and suffering my ramblings. Oh, my no, God. Oh, I love no. it. Great Those are awesome stories. stories. It, yeah, makes for a good podcast. You had that's, all the good stories. That's yeah. all we do here is we just fuck around for an hour. So you're you're perfect. You know? We like I to have fun. Sure. Sure. Right. <laughs> and anything last minute you want to plug before we let you go or? Um, Raiders go Raiders. Uh, yeah, Vegas <laughs> Raiders. You know, the Raiders baby. I'm and, a uh, Vegas. Man, Vegas. You know, uh, Godsmack. I'll just say we are, you know, all happy and healthy and love one another and we're writing music and we have some cool music happening you know and we're mm -hmm. you know we're blessed enough to have time so we're we're doing it really different this time and taking a couple weeks on and you know however long off and then till the man calls the genius calls when sully gets a spark then we get together well how forever there's no plan like for our, however long we can get together we get together mm -hmm. so, and create together and so it's a it's a beautiful time you know i know it's it's a horrible time but kind of for me and this whole hermit thing i'm digging it yeah you know yeah. for now it's been a cool change and um become the fish turtle guy and write music with my friends now it feels like you know we'll have to put a record out someday but yeah. <laughs> right now it's like we're just loving you know just i don't know like kind of like you know, reflecting even on, oh, wow, what we've done the last 20 years together. And it's crazy, man. You know, it's, a, it's you know, you just you, you try and make the best out of everything that, we, that we're given, you know. And so we got given this pandemic. Let's just make the best of it for now. And, and be safe out there, RJ, man. God damn it. Touring in this, man. Oh, I got a whole high note about it coming up pretty soon. But, yes, no. I, I, can, I can attest to that. When you're on tour constantly, like – uh, being home for this long in, in a row is a very rare thing. So you got to find the silver lining in there. Yeah. The last and time I know. saw Godsmack was like 2002. Wow. That's, that's, a, that's, a while. that's wow. before that's I was wow. in, I 2003. Came that's you, me. Yeah. You played wow. Rapid City, South Dakota. Or, well, you didn't. The band did. Played Rapid City, South Dakota. I was in high school. It was Godsmack, Tantric. Three doors down. Tantric. Wow. Yep. <laughs> and that was like the highlight of my year in little, you know, Podunk, South Dakota, yeah. where we live. But um, we actually, I, I, it's time for me to see a Godsmack show. So I'm yeah. ready for all this COVID shit to go to bed. And I want to get back to normal. Yeah. I'm so ready to catch these festivals. We're talking about taking Stop, Drop, and Talk on the road. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. As soon as hey, you know. RJ, uh, because we're gonna I think we're doing like six festivals next year. Yes. Oh nice. So yeah, I mean, because you know, we have these makeup dates or whatever. So yeah. we'll probably we'll probably see you. Oh you know? man, I can't wait to see you guys. Oh, I miss yeah, you guys. You guys. <laughs> well, you Shannon, too, you, you you stay healthy and active because we're we're all looking forward to seeing a Godsmack date, you know, eventually coming here soon. So that's right. I can't wait for it. So, 
And you're, keep you're doing help, what you're doing, man. Your yeah, healthy lifestyle is inspiring. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, B Rock and Eva, nice to meet y'all. And uh, RJ, I'm gonna go and catch the rest of Thursday night football. Be safe. Yes. Up. Are yes. the Raiders playing? No, they they oh. played Monday night. They played Monday night football. That was a game. Oh, you, right, right, right. I mean, that was a game, though. I mean, not yeah. about Raiders football. I mean, we had to win it twice. You know. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I right, enjoy the game, man. You thanks enjoy for, your football, man. Thanks so much man. for coming on, Shannon. Have a good yeah. rest of your night. It's good. Thanks for having ah, me. Guys. I love you, brother. Good to see love you, man. man. Love you. Thanks I'll for having me. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, dude, anytime. Come back anytime. See you later. Shannon Larkin, everybody. All right, RJ, it's time to hop into that high note. All right, let's uh, let's uh, wrap this little puppy up on a high How awesome, but real how awesome is Shannon? Amazing. He is, yeah, he's oh, so great. Jeez. He is such a sweetheart. He, he lives such a such such a, a great wholesome life he's like such a caring he, he literally gave me this jacket as a gift i was like wow incredible like having like one of your childhood heroes give you a gift it's so he's a amazing. stand-up guy very i was cool. very impressed yeah he is yeah. a stand-up guy and i'd love to see him do stand-up anyway it's time for that weekly high note let's do it let's rip it and this week's high note is called so what else is going on in the world huh Oh, uh, I don't know. What's happening? Uh, uh, how are you doing? Uh, what's going on? Oh, yeah, that whole never-ending pandemic. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> the whole let's beat the virus together charade. It's been going on longer than a fart in a shower. <laughs> and the end of the woods seems oh so very far away. And you're thinking, wow, RJ, what an optimist. That is me being optimistic. You don't want to hear my pessimistic view. (laughs) Not enough for you? Okay. How about this for legit optimism? My band did a tour in a pandemic. Not one of us got sick. We tried an experiment. We decided if we want to go back out on the road, play shows, pay our crew, pay our bills, and provide the environment for those who crave the live experience and missed it dearly, we have to do it right. We want to keep on doing this and do it safely. We don't want to cancel or postpone shows. And the best chances against that happening is touring with a strict set of health and safety protocols while maintaining our impenetrable bubble for our entire camp, band crew and drivers. Y'all want to hear about my daily routine? Huh? Let's do it. Well, goes a little something like this. Number one, wake up bright and early at the crack of noon. Shake off the tequila hangover. Brush your teeth and immediately get poked in the brain with a jagged pipe cleaner every day. Our photographer, Judy, took on the role of official band EMT. She did her due research on the virus, how to perform a rapid test, ordered a ton of them, and jammed that fucking prickly miniature toilet brush so far up my nasal cavity, I'm pretty sure I lost some childhood memories. Tell you what, though, it really wakes you up. I didn't even need coffee most days. Just a yunk and a woo! Good morning, Peoria! For the rest of the day, we follow the proper steps like social distancing, providing sanitizer stations, and enforcing strict nose and mouth covering requirements to our camp, our support acts, our lo- the local crew, etc. Basically, everybody. If you're not in the bus or outside all by yourself, you mask up. And they wore them all day willingly and diligently like rock stars the team player mentality was beautiful because everyone wanted to work and if this is what we had to do so be it and guess what not one of us died of carbon dioxide poisoning either wow shocker right we didn't go out and eat on days off we would either grill out in the parking lot or our assistant tour manager detroit would arrange catering in one of our hotel rooms which is kind of nice like a, a big band and crew thanksgiving hang every day off with basic cable movies in the background, just like when we were kids. On show days, we didn't have buffet-style catering in the venues. Instead, we'd make food orders. At festivals, we'd stock the bus to avoid the catering tents, and all of our press was done over the phone or on Zoom. Now, this was the weird one, though. During normal touring times, my daily routine always involved a morning workout at a local gym. It keeps me balanced. It's good for my brain. It's good for my health, especially while you're touring, which can be grueling. It helps to keep the anxiety and depression at bay. It also helps me play better, helps me sing better. It keeps my joints loose and limber and pain-free so I can continue beating the shit out of myself on the drum kit every night like an idiot. 
exercise and stretching and mobility. Endless benefits. No shit, RJ. Uh. <laughs> but public gyms are disgusting to begin with, <laughs> even without a deadly virus. For this tour, it was out of the question. So I built a travel gym. I brought two adjustable dumbbells, a fold-up bench, this collapsible pull-up bar rig, and a makeshift cable pulley. I would set it up every day in the parking lot, and voila! Instant Planet Fitness, minus the lunk alarm. And you know what? Something really cool happened. I used to love going to the gym to get out of the venue, get away from everybody, put my earphones in, and just enjoy some alone time. It was kind of meditative in a way, but I'm working out in the parking lot next to the bus, and everyone's walking around. I thought it would be super awkward but it was in fact the opposite. All of a sudden, everybody wanted to work out. I went from being the lone gym rat to sort of taking up the role as gym coach for several of us. It was fun. It was encouraging. It was infectious. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know? Not as infectious as the virus, but, but... okay, I just, okay, okay. Oh, that, I deserve that. <laughs> and it just made sense to me. The more all of us prioritize our health, the less likely it seemed one of us would get sick. We found a solution for everything. And all these changes led to a healthy, positive, and less stressful work environment for everybody. Of course, not every change felt positive. Two things I really missed. Number one, mingling with the other bands and meet and greets. I really wanted to spend more time with the bands we had out with us, like The Who or Amazing. Luckily, they understood what we had to do and they complied. And doing in-person meet and greets are something we've always done and always loved doing because we love hanging with the fans. We want to be accessible. We love going out to the fence at the end of the night, taking pictures and giving high fives and, of, of course, hugs. I'm a big hugger. Eva is not, and that's okay. I respect that. It's the elbow forever with you. Sadly. sadly I hugged you. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah. One time. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. No, I appreciate that. But, uh, but anyway, I, I digress. Sadly, we just couldn't take the risk. If one of us got sick, that would be it. Tours canceled. And we need we need all four of us to put on a hailstorm show. Unfortunately, we're not the kind of band who can just have one of our friends fill in for us. It just wouldn't work. So these were the sacrifices we had to make in order to live and in order to work. But I'm telling you, I can't wait to bring meet and greets back when it's safe to do so. And I can't wait for Stop, Drop, and Talk to do interactive things with you. You on the other side of that screen oh, in God. the skin. It's going to happen. Oh, I can't wait for that to happen. It's going to be great. And I hope that these simple steps I just discussed can be kind of a blueprint to other touring acts out there so we can all help us get back to that. If you want to do it and do it safe, then you have to do it right. If you adapt with the times, you have to innovate and you have to sacrifice. But in the end, it's all worth it because when touring has become 90% of your life for so many years, you'll do whatever it takes to keep it going. It's a fragile thing. It could all poof, be gone tomorrow. So we all have to think about us all as a whole. We have to be careful, cautious, and considerate because it takes only one reckless act to ruin it for everyone. And nobody wants to be that asshole, do we? Ooh. So stay strong, stay safe, stay compassionate, get your shot, wash your hands, cover your holes. Let's all make these hardships temporary because we're in this together. All right, and that's our show. I want to thank cover your holes. <laughs> cover your holes. <laughs> your face holes, okay? Everything. Well, you want to cover everything. Make sure you're wearing pants too. Don't okay? tell me what to do. <laughs> I'll know. cover my hole. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, all right. All right, you a-holes. That's our show. I want to thank Shannon Larkin, Eva Steele, B-Rock, Dan Catullo, and all of you Stop Dropping Talkers out there. Please like, subscribe, and hop back on the Soul Bus with us next time right here on Stop Dropping Talk. Good night, everybody. So long. COVID-19. COVID-19.